Hi everyone, Raif Darazi here, and this is your latest HIV news video. Today I'll be covering 10 articles covering topics ranging from a gene therapy that uses HIV's own antisense transcript to push the virus into long-term dormancy, i.e. a functional cure, and a new mRNA lipid nanoparticle, or LNP, technique that can sneak CRISPR-based tools into resting immune cells to wake up hidden HIV, another strategy for cure. We'll talk about how biological aging complicates cure strategies by strengthening HIV's hidden reservoirs, a cheap HIV drug showing promise for diabetic eye disease, a $24 million cure center opening in Philadelphia, and trends in cancer rates among people with HIV. Plus, I'll dive into UN AIDS possibly winding down by 2030, NIH stepping back from HIV guidelines, Nigeria's push for local test kits, and how vaccine experts are building a new panel after RFK Jr.'s CDC shakeup. I have to say, with the sheer volume of news coming out lately related to HIV here in the US and globally, it's been quite the task to cover as much as I'm able. Also, oftentimes by the time this video comes out on each Wednesday, there are already numerous breaking news headlines that I'm unable to cover in the same week. For more immediately breaking headlines, be sure to also follow me on Instagram and X, where I often repost the latest headlines. Links to my socials can be found in the description box below this video. All right, diving right in. Number one, DevX. Will UN AIDS sunset by 2030? UN AIDS, the UN's agency leading the fight against HIV AIDS, is planning a huge downsizing that could eventually lead to shutting down its secretariat entirely by 2030, according to a report going before its board next week. Facing shrinking donor funds, UN AIDS will cut its staff by 55% and move most operations out of Geneva by 2026, keeping just 20 people there while shifting work to cities like Johannesburg, Nairobi, Bangkok, and Bonn. By 2027, it must present a plan to potentially close altogether, depending on global HIV progress. Advocates fear the changes could leave gaps in prevention and treatment, especially if countries with rising infections like the Philippines lose critical support. One UNAIDS staff representative called it unfortunate to see suggestions of the Secretariat winding up before reaching the finishing line, warning that UNAIDS is needed more than ever as funding dries up and HIV cases rise in some areas. We're seeing more and more that the centralized nature of fighting HIV AIDS in the world is breaking apart and it's up to local governments and coalitions to work together. While I'm sure other organizations will rise up to fill the void, I believe there's a permanent shift in the mindset of many that's happening that we all need to be more self-reliant and that we also cannot rely too heavily on one source of support. Number two, the Washington Post. Administration to phase out NIH support of HIV clinical guidelines. The National Institutes of Health will phase out its support of HIV clinical treatment guidelines by next June 2026, raising serious concerns among doctors that the Trump administration may alter or even dismantle these critical recommendations, which guide care for over a million Americans with HIV. The guidelines, updated regularly, help determine what tests and treatments insurance and Medicare cover. Shifting oversight to another agency in HHS could open the door to controversial changes aligned with Health Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s fringe views on HIV, including his past suggestion that HIV doesn't cause AIDS. Dr. Aniruda Hazra warned, The loss of this kind of federal guidance throws everything into the dark. While other experts fear the guidelines, quality, and rapid updates will suffer if NIH no longer supports them. Number 3. NBC News Outside groups organized to form unbiased, independent vaccine panel. After Robert F. Kennedy Jr. fired all 17 members of the CDC's respected Vaccine Advisory Council and replaced them with vaccine skeptical appointees, independent experts and groups are scrambling to create their own trusted vaccine guidance. Michael Osterholm, director of SIDRAP at the University of Minnesota, is forming the Vaccine Integrity Project to help fill the gap and maintain evidence-based vaccine recommendations. Many worry Kennedy's move threatens kids' access to vaccines covered by insurance and mandated for school, with the American Academy of Pediatrics calling his new ASIP a radical departure. Dr. Susan Cressley stressed, pediatricians have one goal, and that's to keep every child healthy and safe in every community. While states like Wisconsin and Illinois are openly rejecting Kennedy's changes, calling them politically motivated and lacking scientific basis. Number four, Reuters. Nigerian company to make HIV malaria test kits after U.S. funding cut. After the U.S. cut back foreign assistance through U.S. aid, funding that supported 740 million in Nigerian health programs last year, Nigerian company Codex Bio Limited is stepping up to fill the gap by producing millions of rapid HIV and malaria test kits. 
Partnering with South Korea's SD Biosensor and backed by the World Health Organization, Codex Bio will launch production later this month from a new plant near Lagos with an initial capacity of 147 million kits per year, expandable to over 160 million. We have enough capacity to meet the demand, said Codex Bio's general manager, who hopes to eventually supply West and Sub-Saharan Africa, helping address Nigeria's massive malaria and HIV burdens. And this is one recent example of localizing solutions to provide HIV services moving forward. Number five, pause. Are cancer rates declining among people with HIV? A large study published in JAMA Oncology found that most cancer rates are falling or stable among people with HIV, thanks to effective HIV treatment and cancer prevention. However, cancers linked to HPV and viral hepatitis like anal and liver cancer remain a major concern. For example, people with HIV still have a 17 times higher risk of anal cancer compared to the general population. Between 2010 and 2019, Lung cancer rates among people with HIV dropped 17%, and liver cancer dropped 25%, but vulvar cancer, cancer that begins in the vulva, rates actually went up. Researchers warned that as people with HIV live longer, cancer risks will rise with age, stressing that multi-pronged strategies including HPV vaccination, hepatitis treatment, smoking cessation, and better screening are crucial to cut cancer deaths in this population. And as I've covered before, it's so important to not underestimate the power we have over our epigenome, which modulates our likelihood for developing various diseases. And our epigenome is heavily influenced by nutrition, sleep quality, stress, hydration, physical activity, mental well-being, and so on. Number six, the Philadelphia Inquirer. YSTAR is investing $24 million to find a cure for HIV. The YSTAR Institute is investing $24 million to launch its new HIV Cure and Viral Diseases Center on Market Street in Philadelphia, aiming to move beyond lifelong HIV treatment toward an actual cure. The 25,000 square foot facility will expand YSTAR's research team and build on its role in the Beat HIV Delaney Collaboratory which has received $52 million from the NIH since 2016. Director Luis Montaner explained the goal is to eliminate HIV's viral reservoir, infected cells that hide the virus, using cutting-edge immune therapies inspired by cancer treatments like CAR T-cell therapy. Montaner put it this way, Therapy as the answer is still dependent on economic investment and maintenance, whereas a cure would not be. As many of you know, I'm part of the HOPE Collaboratory, which is one of 10 Martin Delaney Collaboratories. This article references the BEAT HIV Collaboratory, which is also one of those 10 that I convene with periodically. Uh, I'm hoping to work to schedule an interview covering this new HIV Cure and Viral Diseases Center, hopefully with possibly Luis Montaner himself. Number 7. The Body Pro. Biological Aging and HIV Cure Research. Interview with Alan Landay, PhD. At the CROI 2025 conference, HIV aging expert Dr. Alan Landay highlighted how biological aging, especially chronic inflammation or inflammaging, can complicate efforts to cure HIV by strengthening the virus's hidden reservoirs in the body. Landay from the University of Texas Medical Branch explained that as people with HIV age, factors like immune system changes, senescent or aging cells, and even other chronic viruses like CMV or herpes can affect how cure strategies will work. He emphasized the need to measure not just a person's chronological age, but their biological age, saying a 60-year-old chronologically may have a biologic age of 70, which could change their response to treatments. Promising tools including senotherapeutic drugs like rapamycin, metformin, and desatinib, which may not only help target HIV reservoirs, but also promote healthier aging. Number 8. Health Day HIV drug potentially effective against diabetic eye disease. A cheap HIV drug called lamivudine might help save the eyesight of people with diabetes who develop diabetic macular edema, or DME, a leading cause of blindness, according to a small study published in MED. Researchers at the University of Virginia found that patients taking lamivudine pills twice daily gained about 17 letters on an eye chart after 8 weeks, compared to minimal improvements with current injected treatments like bevacizumab. A 20 a month or even cheaper oral pill that improves vision as much as or more than therapy with injections could be transformative, said Dr. Ambati, who led the study. Lamivudine works by blocking inflammasomes, inflammatory chemicals involved in DME, while promising larger trials are still needed to confirm these findings. Number 9. Medical Express. Gene therapy may be key to permanently putting HIV into dormant state. Scientists at John Hopkins have discovered a potential gene therapy that could push HIV into permanent dormancy, offering hope beyond daily antiretroviral treatment. In their study published in Science Advances, they focused on a molecule called an antisense transcript, AST, naturally produced by HIV's own genetic material. 
by genetically engineering CD4 T cells, the very immune cells HIV infects, to produce large amounts of AST. Researchers were able to essentially put the virus to sleep, stopping it from making copies of itself. Our aim is to provide a lasting, durable treatment for HIV, explained Rui Li, PhD lead author of the study. Testing the method on CD4 T cells from 15 people living with HIV, the virus stayed dormant for four days before the AST degraded. Current HIV treatments requires lifelong daily pills to control the virus, but gene therapy to boost AST production might achieve long-term viral latency in just a single dose. With nearly 40 million people living with HIV worldwide, this new approach could be a game changer. In recent weeks, I've covered various articles referring to the shock and kill approach to an HIV cure. This involves waking up all the HIV in our body out of latency. That way, HIV treatments can find all the HIV and kill it, thereby curing us of HIV. This strategy mentioned in this article is kind of the opposite, whereby the idea is to make all of the HIV go to sleep in our bodies permanently, also known as the block and lock strategy, thereby achieving a functional cure. HIV may still exist within our bodies, but we no longer need to take HIV medication to control it. Number 10, the body pro. Could lipid nanoparticles and mRNA truly be our path to an HIV cure? A promising new study published in Nature Communications has shown that a novel mRNA delivery method, called LNPX, could help in the quest for an HIV cure by waking up hidden, latently infected immune cells so they can be targeted and destroyed. Developed by scientists at the University of Melbourne's Doherty Institute, this lipid nanoparticle technology, similarly to what was used for COVID-19 vaccines, successfully delivered HIV-related mRNAs into resting CD4 T cells without activating or harming them, a major technical hurdle in previous cure attempts. The mRNAs included elements like HIV TAT and CRISPR-A, which could potentially force HIV out of hiding. Dr. Benjamin Young, a respected HIV researcher, praised this as the first tool that efficiently transfects resting CD4 T cells without having to activate them. But he cautioned that while the lab results are impressive, it will likely be a decade before human trials prove whether this can be a safe and effective cure strategy. Until then, people living with HIV should keep taking their daily antiretroviral therapy, as this breakthrough is still many steps from becoming a real-world treatment. Those are your articles for this week. Links to all these articles can be found in the description box below this video. And by the time the next weekly HIV news video is released, I will be in Kigali, Rwanda, preparing for the International AIDS Conference as a media representative and where I'll also be creating content and co-hosting a symposium. I'm looking forward to sharing the latest research, innovations, and news from the conference with you all. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. Share this with anyone who might find value in this content. Those are the best ways that you can help support me and my channel. Until next week, cheers.